This is Complex Conversations. Thread Trajectory, the future of streetwear. With our host, Complex Style Editor, Carissa Sanchez. Founder of Staple Design, Jeff Staple. Fashion designer, DJ, filmmaker, and tastemaker, Vashti. Co-founder and designer of En Noir, Rob Garcia. Owner of Union Los Angeles, Chris Gibbs. Founder of the classic streetwear brand, The Hundreds, Bobby Hundreds. You're invited to the conversation. Obviously, everybody knows what we're here for. We're talking about where streetwear is going. These guys have a lot of expertise. They don't really need introductions. If you don't know who they are, maybe you shouldn't be here. <laughs> First question, like, you know, there's, uh, I think streetwear has changed over the years. People maybe have different definitions of what streetwear is now. So if we can kind of start, maybe, Jeff, how do you personally define streetwear? I think streetwear is anything that's um, the anti. So to me, it's like a mentality of, uh, if anyone ever told you, like, you shouldn't be doing this because this is not the way we did it or I did it, and you feel like, in the, in the back of your head, you sort of feel like it's not the way other people did it, but I really feel strongly about this is my lane. I feel like that, in essence, is street wear, street culture. It could be making music. It could be writing a book. It could be in the form of fashion. But if you feel like you've got a way that happens to be different from the norm, if you pursue that way, that is street culture to me. I think that um, street wear um, in particular is um, its a way of life. I don't know. I mean, um, for me, it was sort of a way for me to express myself as a girl growing up in the hood who didn't dress very feminine. Um, and it represented, yeah, everything, like music, culture, and um, going against what I was told was ladylike or what was proper. And so um, a way of life, I mean, for me, streetwear. Streetwear is definitely more of like an approach, and it's um, like a DIY approach. Um, a lot of us coming from streetwear didn't like grow up or go into this with like some formal background. You know, for us, it's like was a constant figuring out and a lot of mistakes made, but learning from those mistakes. And it's just a DIY approach. Uh, Counterculture, anti uh, youth culture. So if you think about how we all are when we're young, we are anti what our parents were or what, what have you. And uh, I think street culture and street wear is the fashion side of that spawned out of, you know, when I come, came up, I, I had to wear, like, you know, the brand, whatever brand, whether it was Nike or the, the team I was cheering for. And I remember seeing, like, really early streetwear brands where it was just, nah, we're going to talk about what you're into. And I was just super excited to be able to, like, you know, wear and represent something that was about me and not some brand that I might have been into at, a, at any particular time. I think streetwear, in sum, is an attitude more than anything. I think it's about being independent. Um, I definitely agree to lifestyle, but some of you may know I worked on a documentary about this. Trying to answer this question it took me five years. I still haven't answered the question. It's impossible to answer. It means something different to everybody. And what's going out, what's going on outside on the complex con floor, like that is streetwear today. I would definitely agree that's streetwear today, but it's almost unrecognizable to me and the people that grew up within our generation. It feels different, it looks different, but it's not to say it's not streetwear. So I think streetwear is really an attitude. It's a youth culture, youth movement driven attitude. Do you remember, for all of you guys, do you remember what was sort of your first interaction with what we now call streetwear? Uh, yeah, so I grew up out here in Southern California, and so for my, my first experience with it was Stussy and Jive, this fresh Jive and Stussy, and seeing those shirts because we had grown up in an era of surf culture, t-shirts and skateboarding, and so, uh, you know, it was just logos slapped onto tees, and to see some art that was kind of provocative and was loaded with, with a message and had a statement, um, it just felt like a little uh, subversive. Like, that's what I remember about Jive and, Stu and Stussy and, and Extra Large eventually, too, so. For me, which is going to sound crazy because I own Union now, but it was being a fan of the Union in New York when I first moved there. I moved there from Canada. My wife, who's in the audience somewhere, was like, you need to get your shit together and brought me to this <laughs> store. And I remember probably, like, PNB is an early one. I was like, oh, yeah, it's like a black clothing brand, like that didn't really exist, or if it did, it was like a Marcus Garvey shirt, and that was it. And they were doing like a twist on it, and, uh, yeah. 
And I was like, oh yeah, this represents what I want to talk about. Just being that kid, that, 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 was that consumer trying to find uh, these things. And it was like, the internet wasn't like alive like that. So you really had to like search and find these things. And there was a sense of like discovery and doing your homework and like figuring out how to get to these places. There wasn't like Google Maps. You like literally had to figure out how to get to these places. And it was really about the discovery and it made consuming these things that much more special. You know, there was this era where people were taking things, again, that were like typically known for like, like Disney characters. And then, you know, like in the hood, it was popularized that they would take like the, like Mickey Mouse or whatever, or Daffy Duck, and then dress them up like thugs. And it was like their approach at like taking something that's well known and kind of making it into a new art form. So for me, I feel like that is sort of my introduction or understanding of what streetwear to me is. I grew up upstate. New York. So when I moved to New York City, I ended up working at Stussy. And I think that that was like my real introduction because it was, you know, meeting Chris Gibbs and there was Union, there was Stussy, there was Supreme under the umbrella. Um, and it was like learning, like, you know, I wore sneakers and t-shirts, but then we would do like drops of like, I don't know, the, the, the Supreme Blazers came out and it was like, why are these kids like lined up? Like I was like learning about the culture. I very much am on the same line of Chris. Um, my first exposure was like in the mid 90s. Uh, Union was a mecca of a location for me as well. Um, and it was probably the birthplace for, for the mentality. The thing is back then, like, I knew the 50 other customers that Union had and the 15 Japanese kids that shopped there. And so when you saw a kid wearing a PNB shirt on 42nd Street, like, you could literally walk up to the stranger and dap him up because he was, like, an instant friend because he was wearing, you know, that. Imagine you guys had to do that with everyone who wore a Supreme <laughs> lo cap logo right now. Your hand would fall off. Um, one of my heroes, maybe people don't consider him streetwear, but um, Mark Echo with what he was doing with his brand. Yeah. What he did with Echo and sort of, you know, starting as a brand that meant something to our generation, but then making it mean something to sort of the masses was unprecedented at that point. Um, so that was also like not really core street, but something that I looked up to like, man, you could do something you love, but actually affect like a lot of people with this.